Hello, welcome to the IT Net Tech Update. This month we've been discussing phishing, and in yesterday's webinar, we discussed the SLAM method. I'll make sure to drop a link in the chat so you can, you can catch that webinar. And we'll be going over that a little bit more in detail on today's live stream. Stay tuned till the end and I'll, I'll make sure that I answer any questions you may have. Hello, I'm Michael Kinnett, president and founder of Eternal Networks. And every Friday at one o'clock, we do this live stream on our social media, on uh, our company Facebook and Twitter pages, and on my LinkedIn page. So uh, thanks for joining. Those of you that maybe have watched in the past, thanks for coming back, taking time out of your day to watch this, watch this video. I will be answering questions, as I mentioned at the end. So please post anything in the chat or send me a tweet, uh, send me a direct message. Love to, to answer any of your technology and cybersecurity questions. Uh, today, uh, for the news topic today, I saw this in, in, the, in the news and it's popped up in my news feed a few different times. Uh, last, I can't remember if it was last month or two months ago, I talked about the largest ever denial of service DDoS attack that was blocked by Cloudflare. Well, the record has been beat. It did not take very long. Google thwarted a massive 46 million per second uh, 46 million requests per second DOS, DDoS attack. Uh, luckily, their client had the necessary security measures enabled on it, and so they were not breached and, and did not have, have issues from the attack. Um, but it was 80% higher than the previous record. <clears throat> 80%, that's huge. And to put into perspective how big this attack was, it was like getting a day's worth of web server requests for Wikipedia in 10 seconds. So a, an entire 24 hour worth of traffic to Wikipedia, one of the biggest sites, websites on the, on the web in 10 seconds, that's how big that attack was. So, uh, you know, kudos to Google for, for having the, the systems in, in place to be able to block that and manage that attack. All right, uh, moving on to our topic of the day. So we, we, as you know, we've been talking all month about phishing, it's, uh, it's you know, fishing month with an F and we turned it into fishing month with a PH to, to provide education and training around the threat of fishing, what it is and how to mitigate and protect yourselves against it. And this, this method I'm going to discuss today, as I mentioned, was, was on our webinar yesterday. We had Zach Rogers from Secure Now uh, who was on and he talked about this. And so you can, you know, definitely the links in, in the comments, you can go and, and register, get access to that webinar and, and learn a little bit more about it in greater detail. But uh, I want to I want to talk about it a little bit today. So the SLAM method. Uh, if you just remember when you're looking at emails, you know SLAM sender links attachments message right the text and the message. And I'm going to go over kind of what you need to look at at each one um, with that. We also have a blog post that I just posted about this SLAM method. So I'll make sure to put that in the comments as well. So sender, that's the first thing you should look at, right? Is this is this somebody that you know? Is it a an email address that you know? Is it a domain that you know? And you have to match all of them, right? Just because it says it's from Michael Connect doesn't mean it's from Michael Connect, right? You have to look, okay, the name? Yes, I know the name. Okay, well, do I know that and recognize that email, right? Is the domain name the, the, what I would expect, right? If it comes from, if it says it's from US Bank, well, is the domain the website I go to when I go to US Bank? Or is it us.b O N K or something, you know, slightly off, but, but close to where at a quick glance, it looks like the right thing. So always look at the sender and make sure it's something that you, that you know and trust and recognize. Next, you want to look at the links. If there's links in the, in the message, then you need to look, where do those links go? Right? If you mouse over them, you, you should be able without clicking on them, just hover your mouse over them and it will show you where that link goes. Is it going to where you expect, right? If, if it's a, an email from your bank, does the link go to your bank's website or does it go to some other obscure site that you've never heard of that you don't recognize? So just, you know, hover over them, look at that and be wary of where those things are going. Uh, attachments, this is another big one, right? Um, if you get an attachment and it says, hey, this is an invoice you need to get paid um, and you don't recognize you're, you weren't expecting it, right? 
don't open it. Attachments are, are one of the biggest ways that these criminals um, you know, trick people with, with phishing, right? As, as they send something and you just quickly look at it, you open the attachment and bam, you know, your, your systems could be infected. So look at the, the name of the attachment, look at the file type of the attachment, and, and then look at the attachment in the context of the message in general, right? Is it something that you were expecting? Were you expecting that document or that file? You know, if you get your bank statements on the first of the month and, and it's the 15th and it says, hey, here's this month's bank statement, it's out of the ordinary, you know, that's, that's fishy. So just be wary of that. And then finally, the last of the, the slam method is the message itself, the text in the message. So you wanna look for grammatical errors uh, in the subject line and in the body of the, of the message, right? Is, is, there, is there spelling mistakes? Is there, are there commas and periods where they're supposed to be? Are words in the proper order? A lot of time these criminals don't speak English as their first language. And so, you know, based on their language and translating it into English, sometimes words get mixed up a little bit. You know, maybe there maybe there's an S at the end of a word when there shouldn't be, or maybe it's missing an S when it sh when there should be. Is it using the proper context? Uh, so as you as you look at all of these things in the message, right? So you look at the sender, you look at the links, you look at the attachments, and then you look at the message text itself. All of those can give indicators on whether this is legitimate email or whether it's something that maybe you should not open, not respond to without contacting your IT or your security specialists. Um, so I know for, for us, we have a 911 mailbox that uh, that we can send anybody in our company that gets something that looks odd, they can send it to that for analysis. And our clients that have that anti-phishing service can do the same thing, where it's been analyzed and it runs through a similar methodology using artificial intelligence on the back end to, to let them know, hey, is this, is this legitimate or not? Um, for those of you, uh, for those clients of ours that have our Breach Secure product, you can also use the Outlook plugin to click where it will analyze uh, using the SLAM method for you and, and highlight each of those components of SLAM, sender, link, attachment, message, that might seem a little bit off using some artificial intelligence to help you get better at recognizing phishing threats. Hopefully that was, that was uh, helpful information. Um, Let's see here. So we've got uh, an upcoming event. For those of you that are in Las Vegas, uh, we want to make sure you're aware of this. We send out postcards. We're sending out emails. Charles is going to be making some phone calls. But we have a, an, a, an in-person event. We're calling it Fish and Fishing. It's a Sequest adventure. So we're going to be at the, the Sequest Aquarium at the Boulevard Mall there in Las Vegas. It's going to be, once again, it's for locals. It's a family-style event. You can bring your kids. Um, we're going to be discussing the threats of fishing and providing some education around fishing and uh, also learning a little bit more about fish and the, the wonderful creatures uh, that are out there in, in the waters uh, and be able to go around in the aquarium. There's birds, there's uh, other types of lizards and other wildlife the kids can enjoy. So bring the family. We're going to be covering admission to the aquarium. We do have limited spots, so registration is required. You have to RSVP. Um, we are going to do an animal meet and greet um, during our presentation on fishing. So while we're talking to you about the, you know, fishing and threats and, and some different things with that, your kids can be, you know, getting to know uh, one of the animals that's there. So if you're interested in coming, it's August 31st. Uh, we're starting at 4 p.m. Uh, admission, you can stay as long as you want. We're going to be there from 4 till 6.30 or 7, uh, but you can definitely stay to a close and enjoy enjoy the exhibits there. Uh, if you're interested, send me a private message and we can get you links to the registration for that. Um, let's see. Emily is asking if there's any apps or websites that I recommend not using. That's a great question. Um, I, I would say stick to the standards, right? So if you're using, one of the biggest things that I see with browsers in particular is there's a lot of plugins for browsers. I'll just say be very wary of any plugins or apps that you're downloading to add features to those browsers, right? Regardless of whether it's Chrome, Edge, Firefox, Safari, right? They all have plugins and options out there. And some of them may be like, oh, well, this is gonna make it look all sparkly and look pretty. 
Well, those things can open up and introduce risks and cause problems. Uh, same thing with any, any program that you can download from the internet. Uh, there are some amazing tools out there and some of them are free, but you gotta be very careful. So if you're doing a search for a program that does something and it takes you to some weird website, you can use similar techniques from SLAM when you're analyzing these apps and these websites, right? Look, are there grammatical errors? Where does it from, come from? Does it have that security lock up in the top browser indicating that that website's secure? Uh, so you can you can kind of use similar techniques to, to see if anything looks odd. If it looks odd, don't use it. Right? If you go to a website and you're like, oh, I don't know, something just seems off, close that browser tab and go somewhere else. Uh, it's not worth the risk uh, that's out there. If, if any of you have any questions about specific apps, you know, or, or needs for apps, and maybe there's a specific software that you're looking for, uh, more than happy to help point you in the right direction. Send me a, send me a message on that. Let's see, I don't see any other questions coming in, but uh, hopefully, hopefully you guys all have a wonderful weekend and we will talk to you next week. And hopefully we'll see some of you at our, at our live event. Thank you, have a, have a wonderful time.